Okay. It's been a hey while. Guys. It has been a while. It has been a it's while. It's been so long. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back with you all. Woo! Yes. How's it going, everybody? Hello. Welcome back to another episode of Bulletin Broadcast. As oh. you probably guessed, I'm joined by Greg. Oh, better believe oh. it, you fuckers. I'm yeah. back. <laughs> episode 11. <laughs> Everyone thought we were cancelled, maybe. But we're not. It's just yeah. literally awkward timing with everyone that has meant we couldn't meet for like a month or possibly longer <laughs> yeah and, and Jared's possibly here. Longer. Jared's here. i'm here too we're not dead we're still alive no. you know i did actually get matt messaging me he's like where the fuck is the podcast I was like, Dude. <laughs> <laughs> at least at least someone's watching us right yeah exactly at least we have a small audience we're, we're, we're getting there we're good we're good yeah matt has been really worked up about it he keeps turning up at my door with like his cock between like pieces of bread and saying this is a cock sandwich oh, go okay. do the broadcast i i feel you no know, i don't I, feel cheated, I don't know why man. i'm surprised i feel cheated because about i feel greg. It was I think just I... me well he's only turned up at my door because i keep sending him my address every day saying come see me matt oh, come see, see. me that, that specifically why. with with your cock between two pieces of bread I didn't say that bit. That was all his own, you know, oh, you know what okay. Matt's like. He'll get some no, bit of flair in his... You know, he, he does you know. have a hell of an improv comedy. But... He, he does. He writes pure golden comedy. You look at it and you pick it out of the comedy tree and it is Matt's oh, apple yeah. of comedy. Yeah, you, can tell. Apple. you can tell. Um, I'm going to trademark that right now. Yeah. Matt's apple. <laughs> <laughs> he is definitely... Right, we're talking way too much about Matt. Um... <laughs> I don't think we talk enough about Matt. In many ways, yeah. this podcast we're, we're exists waiting. solely he's, to talk up Matt. He's going to be listening. Matt, right Matt you, you need to come on. You said you wanted to come on. You need to come on. Get get yourself in motion and come on and be a guest on the podcast. We, we, we can know have what a nice want. little. We can have a nice little foursome going on here. It's fine. Mm-hmm. We can do it. Yeah, it'd be nice. Although, I mean, he might be a little intimidated now because we've kind of talked him up a bit. Yeah, we have. So he might come on <laughs> and then he'll just be like, oh, I've got a cold today. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just be quiet and like all dozy and I'll be like, oh, Matt's overrated. Ah, boo, get rid of him. Because we have such a passionate audience. That says yeah, of course, things. because I mean, they're always very vocal in the comments, you know. Mm-hmm. That yeah, is very true. true. Right, let's talk. Let's talk about the number one trend in video. Then let's talk about the the Call of Duty World War Two reveal trailer. <sighs> All right, okay. I'm, I'm did, not did gonna. Did either of you guys watch it? Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I tried to go in open minded, but a lot of things. But whenever there's a Call of Duty reveal, I tend to be very closed minded because I'm not. Yeah. A particularly big fan of COD. I don't like the route they went down. Yeah. I um, agree. But this this trailer actually has me kind of excited for it i'm the same way as you've been like when i go into a call of duty trailer unknowingly i kind of just have like like a negative i guess look towards it because it's kind of like you said the same thing but with this world war ii trailer it, it, like you said it got me kind of excited as well there isn't much gameplay there's a lot of cutscene footage um yeah they were saying that it's like in-game footage as well but too, yeah an engine or anything like that is game is in-game yeah, have you have you watched it, Greg? I did watch it. I thought it looked pretty nifty. I mean, World War Two is it's hot again, isn't it? It's back in. It's trending. It's fashionable again. It's what they say like, about Finns. They go out of fashion and then they come back like eight nine years later. They do. It's it's how it works. Media's done that for you know generations. Um, I mean, it, it you know it was that World War Two was oversaturated as a concept, and every other shooter was that, and it was generic as fuck. And now the current paradigm after Call of Duty Four brought in, um, what's it called, Modern Warfare? Um, after that, now the current oversaturated thing is everything is a modern shooter, and you see that everywhere. And it's like World War Two again. Wow, that was that war that happened. That was that thing that happened. I, remember I that. yeah, I have to admit, like it, I can't put my finger on it, but I feel like this is the World War game I want over Battlefield One. Uh-huh. I enjoyed Battlefield 1, but it felt that it was lacking something, and I could never put my finger on what it was that it was lacking. I um, mean, a lot of, like, uh, text, not text, uh, like, media, like, they'll do well in a certain time. Like, things, I mean, Movie Bob, who I love, um, did this really brilliant video on why the Spider-Man, like the Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, were so successful is because they came out at a time when that was what the world wanted. Like, the themes and everything that that struck worked so well and all of that. And I think 
in today's days of upheaval and all of this stuff going on in the world, we like it. We'd like to see an objective evil because, like, no one. Th- well, some Nazis still exist today, but no one thinks. Most people don't think that the Nazis are good. I mean, everyone yeah. can get behind so, Holocaust is bad sort of stuff. So with, Let's go with shoot that, Nazi. with that, do you think like this Call of Duty is going to tackle those sensitive topics like the Holocaust and stuff like that as well too? I think they would be intelligent to make that sort of stuff work out. Like, they'd want to thick. I mean, it looked like, actually, in the trailer, it looked like they were exploring themes of Shades of Grey and um, the, you know, the American troops and the Allied forces yeah. and everything weren't perfect either because there was talk of, like, a, a village that got bombed or whatever and they had orders and all of that, which, I mean, that's that. That's a thing, I guess. But they would be... They do well to maybe just a nice popcorn uh, cookie cutter shooter where it's like, oh, those are the bad guys. Fuck them. Let's shoot them and fuck their shit up. <laughs> like, that's good, you know? I mean, yeah. maybe I'm just a bit. Maybe I just want a simple experience with my shooter, with my World War II shooter. Uh, maybe yeah. I'm old fashioned like that, guys. I don't know. I think people want that like tackling of those sensitive topics and stuff like that like the holocaust i think people like mm. would love that in a game like especially like the call of duty game like this i don't think they've ever had a, a video game which is actually directly yeah. called the holocaust so, i mean in yeah. world uh, call of duty 5 world at war you played as the russians for some of it but i don't think you were one of the any of the forces that liberated the camps or anything no like i was just about to say that would be cool to have like a a mission towards the end where you liberate a camp like that would, that be, would be really, really cool yeah. as long as it's tackled yeah, sensitively because I mean obviously it's such a it's oh, yeah, such, such a such high a... profile fin mm. that it has to be handled correctly um, yeah, as with the other week you know uh, I guess an example don't... I can think of is I just played um, what is it uh, Mafia 3 recently Ooh. and in the beginning yeah. they kind of say they kind of say like hey there is some extremely racist and derogatory things in this game but we thought it would be even worse to not mention or not show these things as well too yeah i mean to it was like, kind of like that and it was really like it's just like it's very like puts you in the experience with yeah how, i never played how the game plays out i never played mafia 3 but i did have to i oh, always yeah, sort of subtly gave credit to them for saying you know hey this was how it was and this is where it's set mm-hmm. we're not going to sugarcoat it here's a warning so that you know that it's coming but we're not going to yeah. sugarcoat it and I feel like exactly. if they did something like that, if they said, like, this is going to tackle, you know, yeah. the events of the Holocaust and the liberation of the concentration camps, just as a, like a, as a heads up message in yeah. the beginning of the campaign or something. Yeah. And that's how Mafia 3 was. It was a legit message. And before you played the game, just letting you know about what this game's about and like what the, this, what's going to be in this game as well. Yeah. And I mean, you seem to, um, there's a big fin in the trailer. I don't know how far you guys got into it, but um, you oh, join you join like a unit called Blood One or something, and they seem to be like a like a specialist unit or a unit that's hmm. known for defying odds. Like there's a, a lot of the trailer, they're kind of either outnumbered or outgunned or something. Hmm. So it, it would make sense for them to be the ones who are leading the assault if there is any kind of liberating going on or even if there's like a d-day fin i don't think there were there was much i mean my military history is not perfect but Mm -hmm. i don't think there was much liberating that happened by the western allied forces i think that was mostly by the russians yeah but i I can't i don't know i don't see them i don't know i think it looks like it's gonna be a good game it's good it's gonna gonna be be good good. but i I kind of i'm just trying to work out what this unit is going to be because it seems to be a very sort of like I said like a very specialist or like a very well trusted unit that they they go in and they do what needs to be done well that yeah. would make sense it's the only way that it adds up that because you know in a Call of Duty game you're not like a normal soldier are you? no you're like a special ops you yeah. definitely have more training than everybody else and you're more yeah. skilled you always go into a fight and drop a hundred people and then they say mission yeah. succeeded you will get them next <laughs> time sort of stuff I mean, they won't say that because they're dead now because you won. But like, you know, what I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah, I kind of, 
I just, like I said to you guys in the chat before we started, I just hope they don't keep the supply drop model. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the microtransactions. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, those are great for games, especially multiplayer ones. Yeah, yeah, that's really, really awesome. I mean, like like Battlefront with its pre-order bonuses of giving you upgrades for the classes and stuff. Battlefront 2 has been... EA's Battlefront 2 has been announced. That's exciting. Oh, God, yeah. That looks, did you see the trailer for it? Did you, I did saw you not the know? fuck out of the trailer of it. Oh, God, that's amazing. It looks awesome. It does look awesome. It's um, interesting how you play, like, uh, like, Empirical Soldier this time. Like, that's mm. kind of the main character. And I was like, huh. It looks really awesome. Really awesome. Jared, your reaction to everything is, ha! Huh, <laughs> like, it's always, it's always like a an underwhelmed surprise, isn't yeah. it? Like, <laughs> just like, well, I guess that happened. Sort of reaction. It's just so I'm never disappointed or I'm never overexcited. It's just, huh? You can oh. kind of imagine you standing there, like putting your hands on your hips, like huh, that. That I did not see that coming. <laughs> isn't that a thing? <laughs> and then you, you do a little look up with that. your head and like move your head. Yeah. Huh. Oh, okay. All right, let's awesome. let's piss Greg off then, shall we? Yeah, oh. I love pissing Greg off. Let's do it. Yeah, Halo Wars what have two. We done? Oh, Greg's favorite game, game of the year, mm -hmm. ten and yeah. ten. So, ten out of ten. Wars. Oh, the uh, the fundamental game was good. It's just they were stupid about it and stupid in the multiplayer and don't play the Blitz and oh god, stop it, Microsoft. <laughs> well, I mean, it yeah. was good, but just stop making them. Credit where just credit's start. due, they did re delay the DLC because there was a very fundamentally game breaking bug. Yeah, one of the new <laughs> units, they can target any unit on the map at any <clears throat> distance. Yeah, so um, basically, you, you attach these units to like a tank or something. I don't know what the names are, I'm just going to go with Skittera, general names. I it is. You attach a, what are they called? A, a skitterer unit. You attach one of yeah. these to a friendly unit like a tank. You send it to your ba your opponent's base. They start to attack. And then your opponent goes, I'm not having that. Starts to attack you back. So you retreat. But these skittery units can continue to fire and hit whatever they're firing you. at from across the map miles away. Yeah, that sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> it does sound fun, Even if it? It says here... Um, it turned out it turned out that once an attached skittery unit started firing on a target, it could continue to do so without with zero regard to range or line of sight. So you could hide behind a mountain and still get hit by one of these bastards. That's yeah. that's so much just So I mean credit mm, to it's... them. They they didn't release it and then patch it. They delayed it and I have to give them a bit of credit for that. I mean I don't is know enough, a ton is it about... enough though, Greg? Is it enough? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to be honest. I got the, the Collector's Edition one anyway, like of Halo Wars 2, or whatever it's called. Special you got edition, suckered the, into that, did you? The, yeah, the Sucker Dick <laughs> Edition or whatever. Um, and um, I get all the DLCs now because I basically pre-bought them all. Um, and I have not turned on Halo Wars 2 since I actually wrote the original script with the Shades of Greg about it, which I will put out one day. I will. I just I'm so busy. someday. Someday, I just keep re-recording it and being like, ah, oh, but I could do better. And then nothing gets produced at all. Um, but yeah, no, I I haven't turned it on since then. I will do, um, and I'll see if all my conclusions are proved right and if the Blitz mode is completely dead, like I. Well, not dead, but stupid, like I expected to be. Um, what was my point? Yeah, no, it's good. Delaying <laughs> it is good, because otherwise yeah, yes. it is a bad. Don't be a bad. Um, There's always a silver lining for delays, because that gives them room for improvement. Yeah, Indeed. I mean... And not game-breaking bugs. <laughs> yeah, there has to be has to be a bit of credit for the fact that they didn't just release and patch it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Which you see happen. Sometimes as well, too. You get a game and day one patches out. It's true. I don't know too much about game making. I know, like, a little bit. Like, bits and mm -hmm. pieces as you pick up. Um, but it's interesting that the delay of this bug has been so long. Like, it's been, like, I don't even know how long. It's been, like, a, a week or whatever. They spent fixing that one bug. Like, it was such a fundamental bug that it took the whole team a week to crack that nut. Yeah... I mean, I guess they're just kind of how like how beneficial is it to play the online mode? 
does it does it benefit you a lot? Do you get a lot of stuff from it? We play the unlock. What do you mean? Like it is like, if you play it a lot, do you unlock new units or anything like this? Is there any kind of progression you... system? Uh, well, in the Blitz mode, you do get your you can unlock new cards, um, which like make your units more powerful and things. Right. Um, that's where the abuse comes in because you can also buy units to make your units more powerful, and uh, that's um, abusable. Um, and even then. I mean, it's a cool progression system. I like it, but it has it carries the fundamental flaw of you can go into a game, even like a brand new player and someone who's been had had the game since day one. There's physically no match there. Like, there's no yeah. competitiveness. It's, it's, it's there. a pay to win situation. In a it's way. a pay to win, or indeed a play to win situation, where you physically have played more than the other people to such an extent that they could never hope to ha- hold a torch to you. Because yeah. you're just like you're fielding a unit that is just so powerful. Like it's that wasn't originally a problem I had when I was doing the Shades of Greg, but it occurs to me that that just doesn't work in a multiplayer game. Mm. And yeah. fundamentally, oh. this card-based system doesn't work. It, sound, it sounds very similar to how like um, the Division was. Ooh. Oh yeah, I never played it myself, but a friend of mine he was out of it for about a month and a half, two months, and he tried to get back into it. And he was like, it's, it's just elitist. Like, as, as soon as you stop playing, if you play, if you stop playing for more than a period of like a week, you just, you have such a hard time catching up with people. Which is unfortunate because like, <clears throat> I mean, I played some of the division and it's a fun game and you go back and do it and it's just like, it's, you lose that experience because it's just not even fun anymore because you're just getting thrown around left and right. Yeah, that's what he said. That's why he stopped playing it. Um, before we move on to the next piece, shall I make shall I, shall I make you a little bit happy, Greg? Oh, make you happy. In, in, in the related articles of that Halo Wars two piece by Matt, the the aforementioned Matt, there was uh, your to your piece back from when we did the Halo Wars two beta, oh. and it, it has eighteen shares to Facebook, Greg. It Woo! What? Yeah. It what? Eighteen shares to Facebook is is a very popular piece. Wow, people were happy to be disappointed about Halo Wars People were happy to be disappointed. That says something. There we go. Silver lining. Yeah, that's interesting. I'd like to track each of those people down and give them a little kiss on the bum. There we go. (laughs) If if you (laughs) was one of 18 said people, uh, his Twitter will be somewhere. (laughs) That's so cool. I like it when I do a thing and then like it it just runs away with itself and infects everyone's brains and upsets me you gotta you gotta I love don't. it i yeah. do i i have got to love it i have no choice if mm. i stop loving it for a single second i will burn up like a shark <laughs> like a shark <laughs> yeah they're burnable creatures you ever burnt a shark jared you know i I've, I've been kind of busy lately so i haven't been shark burning in a while yeah i'm like, off my game but it's, it's, it's cool um, season's coming back up in a couple of weeks man oh yeah up. oh cool 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 Oh yeah, you have been busy with this wedding business. That's um, true. That's true. Jared's getting married. Everyone marrying me, possibly. Yes. I don't know who yes. you married. Spoiler. Is. Maybe, maybe Spoiler his fiance. Maybe. I mean. Oh yeah. What's your fiance's that... name? Can I guess your fiance's name? Is it go, uh, go. Caroline? No. Daisy. No. I like that name. Velma. Velma, you got it. No. no. <laughs> okay, it starts. It starts with an S. Uh, Susan. Right, Susie. this is going to take longer than I thought. I kind of envisioned <laughs> this wait. taking really like we can, a we can, short we can time. Cheat. We can cheat. We can go on Instagram. Jared Dang it, no! <laughs> <laughs> right, while you do that, I'll um, I'll type in Jared repeatedly. Jared. Oh my god, there are so many Jared Mosses. What the hell? Ah, you'll never find me. I typed in the word Jared four times and there's a man with pink hair. Yeah, That's, that's me, him. that's me. That's him. That's me. Even... The pink hair and that, the that's peg him. wig. Yeah, that's me. What he does is, you mm. don't know, but during the shark hunting season, he goes away for a couple of weeks and like transforms yeah, yeah. his look because he's that's like he's his alter ego of shark hunter. I'm actually a, a, a athletic. I'm an athlete star shark hunter, but I have a different persona then. So I had to dye my hair pink, you know, mm-hmm. get the peg leg. That's it. Because I gotta, I gotta have the image, you know. You, you dye your hair pink and have a peg leg. Hmm? Yeah, that's how I my my alter ego's name is Charleston. I'm starting to think you've never <laughs> been shark hunting, Greg. 
<laughs> I'm Charleston, the peg leg shark burner. Come here often to my stretch of the beach. Yeah. That's you found a... me out. You just exploited me on the internet. Thanks. Now I'm, everyone's going to know. I'll exploit Great. you it's on cool. the it's, internet, it's only, Jared. It's, it's only Matt who knows. Don't worry about it. It's not like... oh, okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I wish you and um, uh, Sarah. Santa all the best. Sarah, um, there you go. Sarah, in you, I, I actually said Santa, but it's okay. You said Santa, as right as I said Sarah. You were close. That's almost Sarah. Um, I wish you and Sarah all the best in a marriage. Um, oh, thank you. But I've oh, seen gosh. a lot of sitcoms recently, and sometimes <laughs> marriages go wrong. So what? They They're do. not all good yeah. all the time. Are, are you preemptively providing That's therapy? It. I, I just because you know I care about Jared and actually I, I you know over all of these um, episodes we formed a bit of a friendship I feel um, I feel like we are too so I've seen the the documentary Friends the um, documentary <laughs> documentary Friends um, now what you need to do is okay. not say the name of the wrong woman apparently okay. Rachel is a common one mm. at the wedding. Ooh. Because okay, it okay. will upset Sarah, your 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 fiance. Um, yes, okay. That they won't like that. They'll hate that. Okay. Should I be I, writing this down? Yes. Yeah. I feel, oh gosh, sorry. I feel I feel like I, we might have to do like a like a, a post podcast um, <laughs> advice giving session. No, we need to we need to just dedicate a whole <laughs> podcast to this. Sorry, are. guys. No gaming news today. No, We're ma- talking strict, about strictly marriage counseling. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should have a games bulletin love counselling. Maybe we should derail. I mean, I've already derailed it. But maybe we should. We'll just do. Scrap I tell you what, we'll do it. We'll do it for stuff. Valentine's Day. For Valentine's Day, we will hold couple yes, therapy hold... for gamer couples. Yes, there we go. Ben, I am a love guru. Every day is Valentine's Day in my life. Oh, oh here we go. I, I am it's one like of those in the mind of I hate over commercialized holidays so i'm very anti-cupid and very bar humbuggish oh uh, no it's all right commercialized holidays are the best holidays because they're the ones where you get to buy shit yeah oh you also get to waste all your money exactly you can waste all your money but that's good for the economy and the economy is important is it greg is it really it's actually pretty important to be honest <laughs> only, like only if you buy local i mean if if you if you buy to somebody who outsources and their HQ is in Brazil, it's not it's not as important. Yeah, but that's good for the Brazilians. See, everything's go. good Everyone for wins. someone, and with globalization, it all probably comes back around eventually. <laughs> okay. Uh... Um... <laughs> Not quite sure I had to fucking segue that, Greg, so thank you. Oh, um, I've missed you guys so much. I'm not gonna lie, like I've been like I've had all this pent up energy just to spring things on you guys. Uh, well I'm glad you I'm glad we're here then. I'm glad you I, have all that energy. We missed it. I actually created a list of um things. Cause every week I There's thought, a, re- a list I'm of how you can this. derail. Yeah, yeah. I sometimes do this. Like in the week I think that's a funny idea and I'll note it down. And um, set a reminder to go off in the middle of the podcast, and then that's why I sometimes blur out an idea. By just, the way, I could just see Greg just sitting at his desk, and his phone goes off and it says "derail podcast." He's flipping through his <laughs> notebook to try to find what he's going to derail. He's like, ah, just like, there we go. In big capital men- letters, it's like mention the wedding, mention friends. It's like, ah, oh, yes, there we it's go. Like, <laughs> yes, it's like it's in time. Terminator where all the letters come across this, my like vision. <laughs> And like all of a sudden, I just get a directive that just comes in and just flashes. Derail <laughs> podcast, derail podcast, and then I like my head lifts up and my eyes just go pale. I'm just like derail the podcast, and then I'll just like say, "So, Jared, you're getting married." You do slide you know what? in. That, that, that just fits in perfectly, actually. I, I wouldn't. I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> Good talk. Good talk. Good awesome talk, guys. Yeah. Um. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Sniper Ghost Warrior Free oh, game I had never heard of before I wrote this piece, but apparently, three of them. <laughs> apparently it has a rather long load time. Really? Um, according to Eurogamer, four minutes and fifty seconds to get from main menu into game, um, which is a hefty amount of time. I credit to Ian Higton of Eurogamer. You have one hell of a sense of humor because he made a video 
there's I mean questionable to watch. It gets a bit tedious, but he basically and that's the point. I think. Yeah, he. Yeah, he, that's he, what they're he, trying to. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's like an ironic thing, I suppose, isn't it? He um he saw what he could do in the time it took Sniper Ghost Warrior Three to load, and he managed to play a free lap race of Mario Kart Eight, which he probably could have played two of. To be fair, he had ample time. Yeah. And he did uh, four and a bit speed runs of Gone Home. Now, the weird thing is there's a couple of places reporting about this. Eurogamer, GameSpot have said the same thing, but it only seems to be the PS4 that seems to be having issues. There are no reports of any issues on PC or Xbox One. So they're not having five minute load times on PC or Xbox One? I can't confirm or deny. I cannot find anything relating to the load times of those consoles. Well, that's interesting. I mean, the way it's described. So this is the initial loading screen. Yeah. Like, so basically, from from starts. the boot up, yeah, from boot up, there is a under just under five minute load time to get to load the save menu and then get into the game of point of playing. Um, or apparently there are four locations in the game. So if you travel from location two to location four, you'll have that five minute load screen. But okay. once you're in the location, fast traveling in location four or restarting the game after a death have reduced the load times. Now, CI Games have acknowledged this, but also defended it, basically saying that ultimately they feel that the inconvenience of the long load time initially is rewarded with, pardon me, with rewarded with a comfortable experience once the game's loaded. It, it's just weird that it's not like that all around. It's only like that on yeah, the Yeah, I mean, I, I were, I, that that's was a what I that makes ago. skeptical about. This was a couple of days ago, so let's see if I... Um, what what do you guys think about long load times? Are they are they an issue for you? If, like, once you get in-game, if it's quicker once you're in there, is it that big The two issue? games that come to mind when I think of long load times is Grand Theft Auto and Skyrim. Those oh. two games, significantly long load times. But then while oh. you're in-game, I don't... Especially in, like, Grand Theft Auto... I know, I like, Grand like Theft Auto is what is so long. Oh, it's oh, yes. the worst. Yes, you, it is. It loads up for it... like five minutes. Like, maybe longer. Like, you just go and watch a YouTube video and it's still No, yeah, going. That's, it, whenever you boot up GTA Five, you just, you're opt to find something else to do while you're waiting for that game to load. It's one of the reasons why I switched off that game. One of the many but Like reasons. I said, like, while you're playing it, it's not... Uh, I'm sorry Bad. to interrupt you. Oh, like I'm, I'm just looking. I searched Sniper Ghost Warrior Three Xbox One load times, and all I'm getting are articles about the PS4. Interesting. That's that's really strange. That like I said, they're 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 talking about how the long load times are rewarded with a comfortable experience. Mm-hmm. So are those experiences less comfortable on Xbox and PS4? Like are the load times longer then? Or well, I mean. If if that's the way it is, if this is only the case on PS4, then to those of you who have this game on Xbox One, according yeah. to CI Games, you have an uncomfortable experience. Well done, Xbox One owners. We finally got there. We got the more pro- better experience. We we finally <laughs> have a game that performs better on Xbox One See, than the, on the PS4. Is, I, I don't know if it's because like I'm British or what, but I don't mind <laughs> long loading times. I don't know, because like I'll turn a game on. So when I turn on Grand Theft Auto, I'll put it on. And I know once I'm in, online mode's a bit different because you jump from race to race and etc. But yeah. um, if you just free roam on Grand Theft Auto, then there's practically no wait time. Once you're in, you're in. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I just boot the game up, I leave it loading, I go grab something to eat, grab a cup of tea, you know, and then by the time I come no. back up, it's practically done. Yeah, I, I, mean, agree. I, I, I mean, I I must say, actually, if I, I, I literally, I want to burn cats when Fallout 4 loads, because, <laughs> oh God, on Xbox One, the loading is so long. You're just, sometimes when you're exploring... And you're just like, I wonder what's in that building. And then you look at the name of it and you think, oh, it's just the newspaper paper for Boston. Oh, well, I mean, that might be interesting, but is it worth the 10 minute load time <laughs> going in and out? See, when you're at that no, point, I'll keep in walking. game, 
and you're consciously thinking, hmm, maybe I shouldn't go in this building because the load times are so long, then I think your load times are too long. See. Yeah. This, this, and, is, um, this is almost like a meme worthy now because with Grand Theft Auto, you don't have to worry about load times getting into buildings if you can't get into buildings. That, there you go. Problem That's solved. True. Just close all the buildings down. That's yeah. Like, Rockstar's like the are geniuses. I mean, I, I, one of my things that I expected in next gen was the the Fallout Four that came out on you know this gen um, would be, you know, it there'd be less of that, but if anything, there's Did, more of that. Didn't we even have that on like? weren't there some PS3 games that had like no load times? Once the initial load was done, there was no or minimum load times. I, I swear it was. I, mean, one I, of the, I, I I don't I believe it. I mean, I don't know if there's a, a specific game in mind, but I. I, so. I can remember some of them being like, "Oh, there's no load times. Once it's booted up, that's it." Was it? I, you know, my mind has gone completely blank. My my preference would be the Sniper Ghost Warrior Three model, which is it loads a lot at the beginning, and then there's less loading in the whole process. That yeah, okay. that's that's a better situation, I think. Mm. Um, I certainly would take that over Fallout Four or Skyrim or whatever. Well, like where... like you were saying, Ben, as well too. I mean. It, maybe at first GTA's load times were kind of just like, oh my gosh, this is awful. But now it's just like, okay, I'll go get something to eat real quick, and by the time I come back, it'll be loaded and I can play. I mean, just like I guess, be upfront. You know, if you know your game takes a long time to load, let people know pre-launch. You know, like, hey, yeah. there's a lot to do in our world. It's going to take a long time to load, but once it loads, it's going to be but worth it. Do you think it. that all affects sales? Yeah, that 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 would kill their hype a bit. I don't no, think they would want to deliberately release that uh, information. People, Ben, people are lazy. Come yeah, on. okay. I, I have They're to keep people are very lazy. Exactly. They are lazy. They said that, then like, mm, maybe I shouldn't buy Ghost Warrior three because it's it just kind of time, so. it feels like at the minute that like CI games have kind of they thought nobody would say anything about the load times, and then people have said that. And they're like, oh, well, no, no, no. We, we have a reason for that. Hang on, wait. Let's just, like, dig the reason out of the archive because we knew that this would come up eventually. And like, oh, yes, no, it's a comfortable experience. But then it's not a reason because then the Xbox and PC would have have long load time. So then what happened there? Yeah, I mean, like, <clears throat> if, you, if you're somehow listening to this and you own Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 on Xbox One or PC and it has a long load time or it doesn't, like, let me let us know. Yeah, let's, because let's I, I genuinely, know, I genuinely, I googled it, and all I can find is articles about PS4. Yeah, because I mean, if it's the same all around on all the platforms, then yeah, you can use the excuse of long load times because more comf- comfortable in-game experience. But if it's not doing that on the other consoles, then why is it like that on PlayStation? Mm-hmm. Okay, talking about people being lazy, you you could argue Jeez. this. You could argue this. Downloads reportedly made up 74% of the US gaming market Is last that year. Though? Yeah, that's laziness for me. Like, I've been like, this game, I can physically get it cheaper if I go and pick up a copy, mm-hmm. but I could just download it and then it will be here with me in two See, hours. I tell any game that allows me to preload it, you best believe I'm sitting there come midnight in my fucking pajamas with the game preloaded, <laughs> ready to play. I am See, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the opposite in this in this in this debate because I love physical copies of games, and I'll go to like midnight releases even though I can pre-download it. I'll still go to midnight releases and get the physical copy of games just because I like having hmm. physical copy of games. I, as well. I feel like it's a case by case fin for me. Yeah, like, it depends. Like I just recently got the Switch, mm-hmm. and all um, most of the games I have on it are digital, and that's how I'm mostly going to run is digital just because. I'm going to have it on the go most of the time when I'm using it. And it's just convenience as well. Anything you want to pitch in, Greg? Um, are you allowed to play your Switch during the marriage process? Like, Yeah, can you yeah while I'm up like, there, I'll be, I'll be playing it. Because, will you yeah. be like doing a Zelda and like shooting and killing a baddie with your bow or whatever? Sadly, I didn't wait because I was impatient and I got Zelda for the Wii U. So, oh. I don't know, so. He's oh. just, Jared's just there at the altar like, I... Jared, who'd have put a fucking banana in front of the box? And it's just... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how it's going to be. Wait, hang on. So, what are you playing on your Switch, then? Um, I got Snipper Clips, which Snipper Clips is 
amazing. It's like one of the best games to play with other people as well too. It's super fun. It's actually pretty challenging as well too. Um, right. And I Pardon have me while I Google that. Oh, it's actually really cool. It's a really Jared Moss. Pictures. It has a really, really like cute art style. It's a really cool looking game. Oh yeah, it's very family oriented. It's like, but like I said, it's still challenging as well too. It's do you, still work, actually do really you hard. work on the fucking Snipperclips team or something? Like you're really ramping I... this game up. Yep, that's me. Snipper it's at this Jared. point where Ben, we need to point out that, uh, unbeknownst to you, that this week. Um, the bulletin broadcast is sponsored by Snipperclips. Oh. <laughs> Snipperclips, the game which has characters in it. Mm. <laughs> Snip those clips. Snip Shadow those sponsor. clips. Um, and then I'm playing, I got the like big pack of all the Shovel Knight games. Like, um, it has mm. the base game, then it has the one with Plague Knight. I don't remember the names of it. And then the new one that was just released as well. The That's fun. Spectre of I had never played. Yeah, yeah. I had never played Shovel Knight before. Um, and you weren't missing anything. Oh, it was great. I loved it. I wouldn't go that far. Can't stand Shovel Knight. I like what really? I like it. I think it's really fun, especially like the co-op. The multiplayer is really fun too. <clears throat> That's your choice. <laughs> and then Mario Kart comes out on Friday, so you know I'll be playing that too. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh... I was just kind of I was looking at the figures for this. So seventy-four percent of the sales came from either subscriptions, digital game downloads, DLC, mobile apps, social media games. And the remaining 26 were boxed copies. Um, compare, in compared to the UK, it was actually a 50-50 split. Oh, wow. Interesting. I thought this was actually quite interesting news. Because yeah. at the beginning of this generation of consoles, video game consoles, to be specific, um, we all remember, I hope we don't haven't forgotten, Microsoft did their whole thing uh, where they were talking yeah, about Microsoft. only digital games and uh, always online and all of that stuff. And people all shot it down saying that digital games, like digital sales, have not actually, you know, they've not really made, come in full force yet. A lot of people don't have the internet for it, especially in the United States. And it's just not a workable thing. Whereas mid generation, yeah. look where we are now. We're yeah, I mean, at the point yeah, of definitely. 74% are, of sale, game sales in 2016 in the US I mean, are digital. Like you said, Ben, it's that 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 joy of being able to sit in your pajamas and at midnight and have the game, not have to leave your home, drive anywhere, and just have it right then and there. Yeah, I feel like it. It definitely depends on what game it is. Um, oh yeah, Metal Gear Five. I got the physical copy of because I'm a Metal Gear fan. Battlefield One. I wasn't that fussed. I got the digital copy, um, and I got it in a sale as well. So I got it like half price. And I feel like only. I feel like I'm getting to the point where only certain games I actually care about I will go and get physically. But yeah. games that I'm I'm unsure of I will get digitally. And I I don't know why that is. I just feel like it's so much ad- effort. I will admit that there has been times where I've been playing Xbox and been like, Oh, I really want to play this and it's like insert disc and I'm just like ah yeah 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 <laughs> i have to get up walk all the way to my xbox push the button oh that's that's just too much i can't do all that yeah see i, I will got... admit that i have done that before <laughs> oh, of course dude of course i got the master chief collection on xbox one um via digital specifically because i knew i wanted to keep that shit on my xbox and i wanted to whenever i like just be like oh, i don't i want to play a video game but i don't really want to think about it Let's just flick on Halo and put on a campaign mission. I just like to have that freedom, and it happens quite frequently where I'll just be like, right, Xbox game, just do fucking The Covenant. Like, what a great mission. Mm. And yeah. it, I'm just doing it. Like, I, I do sometimes, I do buy digital games if only um, because they're a game that I know that I want to just jump into at any time. I mean, it does make me a little sad that I don't get the physical copy because some of these games are games I'm. You know, I'd like to have a physical copy of because I do get what you mean, Jared, with the whole physical yeah. copy thing. It's the collector spirit. It's the they're on your shelf. Look at my collection, sort of thing. Oh no, yeah, I, yeah. I'm totally like that. Sorry to interrupt you, gone. Um, yeah, but I mean, I did that. I did uh, Halo Wars Two. I've got uh, 
digital because I want I knew I'd want to jump in but well, I thought I'd want to jump in at any time and play a bit of it and then be like that's me for done for now and then like yeah. piss off well it, it's like I'm, I'm on the fans as well too like I love having the physical copy of games but there is those times where I want to just like you said with how you are with Halo I'm kind of with GTA just, I want to mess around in the game and not really think about it just jump into GTA then not only do I have to wait for the game to load, I have to actually get off my chair and put it in my Xbox. <laughs> well, actually, I was just reading this and looking through about what Greg was saying earlier. Like, since 2010, back in 2020, back in 2010, there we go, 31% of sales were digital and 69% of sales were physical. So you're looking at, like, over three times as many digital sales yeah. in six years. That's a total swing the other way, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like it will get to the point like what all. we're what we're all kind of saying really, where people who are interested in the game or if it's a franchise they like, they'll get the physical copy for the sake of the collection. But, but otherwise anything else, I, anything else, else I feel like is gonna be digital. Unless yeah. I do see it getting to the point where is a at some point a hardware system is gonna go digital only. Yeah, I, I don't it. think Xbox is gonna do that. I don't think. Oh, I don't, I don't think, think it's gonna be. Like, I don't think it'll be Xbox. I think it'll be the Nintendo. Not the next time around. It might. I um, maybe Nintendo. I don't know. The next generation, no one's gonna do it because it fucking killed Xbox One's cred, and they have never <laughs> recovered. Um, yeah, they're not going back that way. They, knew, well, they saw how that. Immediately, it, it, it kind of it almost killed the Switch a little bit as well. When the rumors were coming out first, that it was a driveless machine. Mm-hmm. And everybody was like, oh my god, that means digital only. And people were just absolutely livid. Yeah. And um, now that's how people use it, is mostly digitally. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I feel like... People like the choice. People like the choice. Yeah, I feel like when it, yeah. when it gets to the point where it's kind of like high 80s, maybe low 90% digital, then I feel like we'll start seeing digital only consoles. Just because... I mean, now they would make sense, really. If you look at the figures, if you if you make a digital only console, you are applying to potentially three quarters of the market in America. Yeah, I don't even think that's like so far fetched either. I don't think it's going to happen necessarily with like Xbox, like One or whatever their the future console, and then PlayStation Four. But maybe someone else will come out and have a yeah. digital only console. But that's. I feel like it, it, that's fine. They it have. It's come. called Steam. <laughs> it's it's already like there. The times, it kind right? of feels like the kind of shit that Sega would do. Sega would just be like, oh, we'll come back. We're making a console. And hey, everyone's like, back, oh guys. my God, it's digital only. Everyone, oh no, fuck Sega. You can't even fucking do anything properly. I mean, look, they've been trying to stop Sonic from drowning for years, but he's... And you know well, what? Supposedly like, he's back and less Sonic Mania than ever these days. Sonic, Sonic, well, Sonic, Sonic Mania, Mania looks, looks good, so I mean. Looks pretty shit. What properties what? does Sega even own these days? Dude, Sonic, Sonic Mania is literally just Sonic the Hedgehog 1, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, reskinned with some extra levels. That's fine, though. So <laughs> you, have, <laughs> That's you have a what PC. Jared wants. Download an emulator, download some ROMs, and play the original games. See, what I'm going to do is I'll just buy it on the Switch because then I have the... I can play it on the go and stuff like that. As yeah, well. that, that's the ideal way to that's, I wouldn't buy it on console. I wouldn't buy it on console. I'd buy it on a handheld. Mm. Mm. But no, I see I see the appeal. You could just get an emulator and just easily play it for free. Like I tell you what, no, if it's if it's like not a full retail price, then yeah, I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. But if they try I and sell I, it I, I guess I grew, I grew up playing... I grew up playing those games as well too, so I have a soft spot for Sonic, even though he Dude, let me down Son- for years. Sonic the Hedgehog Two was like one of the first games I remember playing. Oh yeah, but still, I'm not, I'm not paying sixty pound for a fucking game. I can, yeah, I, I can agree. Want. If it's full price, I don't know how. I don't know how I feel about that. But well, that's the big debate, isn't it? It's are platformers and puzzle games and things worth the full price that shooters and other games are? That's the big debate Ooh, because that's a very case by get, case thing again. It is, yeah. You might get more playtime and value out of uh, a game like Rayman Legends, um, but something like Call of Duty might have a six-hour campaign, and no one will question its price tag. Yeah, that's exactly. the debate. That's a, that's a whole thing. Just saying for everyone to mull over and think about in their mm. gorgeous brains. 
a bulletin broadcast bringing you the issues. Yeah. Gaming, <laughs> gaming discussions and gaming marriage counselling. And marriage counselling. We, we, we got it all here. Apparently <laughs> so. Okay, last story, guys. Last story. Before we go into our post-podcast marriage counselling. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Because Code Ben has vein. pushed me to the end. Yeah, he I am. A, he, he wants <laughs> to... I am. I, I'm pushing... We'll get the news out of the way, and then if people drift off, they drift off. <laughs> I drift off. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I'll take, the blame just, on just, each other. Just, this just is, for this that, just for that. Problem. Just for that. You, you can do this one, Greg. Oh. <laughs> so... There's this thing here, and it's a game, and uh, it um, looks nice. It's a Vigi game. It's called um, Code Vein, and it's made by Bandai Namco, the Dark Souls baby boys. And um, they have are teasing their little game, which is going to be all cheeky, and it's got an art style that makes it look cheeky. And um, they're up to business. And in the little teaser trailer, there was some blood and a man who's in a alley way. Mm. And, 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 you, ben. This. and and the ace, the ace of spades, which is important because that's the dead man's hand. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. That's the dead man's hand from poker. So that's a very I important thing. I don't know what any of that means, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is the name of a hand in poker, Greg. If you if you, what is it? Oh, it's a certain hand. There's a certain hand you get in poker, and normally it's like, oh, it's a, a royal flush or whatever. But if you get it with the ace of spades, then it becomes known as a dead man's hand. We call the toilet in my house the royal flush. Oh, Do you know we call that? it the throne. Oh. Tales of Berseria. That's the game I was trying to think of. That's what this looks like. Why, ah, why are you sideballing yeah. me, man? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Tales it's been of driving me crazy. I mean, it looks interesting. It looks it, like I, I have to stick with Jared of what we said earlier. I really wanted the teaser yeah. trailer art style compared to the screenshot art style. That's what I because it was interesting. It was like different. Like I was like, oh wow, this looks interesting. I don't we haven't seen like something like this before. And then it looks like oh hey, hack and slash. Yeah, yeah. Final Fantasy looking game. It had this really cool like hand drawn, yeah, cell shaded fin going on. And I mean, Maybe it looks fucking um, awesome. Maybe, Maybe the cut do, like, cut like, scenes, like, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong; it still looks good. I love like games with this art style, but the original art looked cool too. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Let's see if I can get some stuff on here. Use blood vows to complement your character's abilities. Oh, should we, should we read the who who has the best presenting voice? To read to read that little Getting description there, Jared. after Come the on, trailer. You're American. <coughs> Everyone wait, wait, loves what an I, American to tell them what, what to am, think. What am do. I reading? After the trailer, there's a description. <clears throat> In the not too distant future, <laughs> a mysterious disaster has brought collapse to the world as we know it. Towering skyscrapers, once symbols of prosperity, are now lifeless graves of humanity's past, pierced by the thorns of judgment. At the center of the destruction lies a hidden society of revenants called Vain. This final stronghold is where the remaining few fight to survive, blessed with gifts of power in exchange for their memories and thirst of blood. <laughs> Given to the bloodlust fully and risk becoming one of the lost, fiendish ghouls devoid of any remaining humanity. There we go. That was well good. Can you do my Shades of Greg's? Because you like read that whole paragraph without any flaws. I mean, there was a brief flaw, but it was like, mm. I did. you kind of played it off. You did that really <coughs> well. Thanks, Greg. I'm actually... so shit at reading things aloud. Oh, I did. reading scripts is the fucking worst, isn't it? I hate it. Jared, can you just like be me? For I'll a just while? I'll just be you for a while. They'll never know. Yeah, maybe I'll just They're... send you scripts and get you to read them, and I'll call it Shades of Greg <laughs> slash Jared. Shades of Greg, Greg, and then at the bottom says featuring Jared in really small letters. Yeah. Because that's what they do with um, extra credits, I think. I think they just, um, someone mm. else writes it and then they get a guy to read it who's good at reading stuff. Yeah. I really yeah. didn't know what voice I was going with in the beginning, so it kind of changed, but you know. It, no, it you, you, you pulled it off, man. You pulled it off. I thought it was pretty decent. You sounded all like, you know, movie trailer, like a business is going on sort of thing. I tried doing that and it went away. In a world where one man likes reading. <laughs> <laughs> He dares to find more things to read. He dares to find more things to read. The summer. 
<laughs> this um, summer, reading man. Love it. <laughs> Go Absolutely watch it, it, you idiots. <laughs> reading man. We gotta make it now. We gotta make it happen. Mm-hmm. So what's this? I don't know what you think I'm capable of. I can't produce a film <laughs> this summer for you to just yes, you can. be in, Jared. Yeah, you can. Sure, sure Greg, man. Oh. All right. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll kickstart that as well. After the Japan thing, I want some money. Uh, I Japan need the camera equipment. Thing. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting about that. Oh. I never forget about that. I think about that every day. Do you know, now you think, <laughs> I do actually genuinely wonder how much support we would get. I... I'd it, if people knew us a bit better, they might go for it. But like, mm. I'd give us a pretty penny. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I'd put like a tenner into it and see. Yeah, we'll, we'll, it. we'll all kind of chip in to make it look like people actually give a fuck. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah, it makes it look good, doesn't it? Mm. It's, nice. it's like when you when you create a YouTube channel and then you create a separate account and subscribe to your own YouTube channel. There wow. you go. Hey, okay, look, I like that. You should watch it. I've <laughs> never had to do that. Lies. No, oh, I yeah, genuinely yeah. haven't. I've got enough people around me to pressure into. Oh, okay. I, I see. How, are you trying to say I'm Billy Lermates? Is that it? Oh, should... I I wouldn't dare. <laughs> then. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, what, I had I had the natural makes... advantage of being like, "Hey, Aussie, ask a friend," and I was like, "I'll ask a friend." And then oh. we already had two subscribers for Brits and Suits, and then of course our quality content got out there, and we eventually climbed up to 190 and falling. For some reason, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. It's making me sad, though. The it's great plateau. Because we're releasing like a video a week, though. Oh, uh, this is this weird YouTube model where you have to upload like four times a week to have any relevance. Yeah. yeah. What makes me kind of sad about this game is that I know it's going to be like PS4, PC, and that makes me sad. Well, it's, it sounds cool because it says here the blood valves are equipment that suck the blood of the enemies and also function as armor. Using the blood valve successfully in an attack unlocks a special ability called Tempered Blood. This has varying effects like strengthening the character, weakening the enemy, or performing a direct attack. Yeah, Ben, of course it sounds cool. I can't play it if I don't have a PlayStation 4 or PC. It, it looks very Dark Souls-ish, doesn't it? Like, I just not, not, in its, even, not in its art it in... style, but in its play style, it looks like it's going to be Dark Souls-ish. Was it in the yeah. trailer? I'm sure I saw it. They said, like, prepare to... Prepare to dine. dine. Yeah, prepare to dine, which I thought was a bit on the nose. But, you know, it was cute, mm. I guess. You know, some guy was just like, hey! Well, I mean, like, I love the awesome demon dude who's at the end of the trailer. He's yeah, just yeah, yeah. fucking he looked, awesome. He looks sinister. He's probably up to something. We should Another reason I'll probably have to get a PS4 eventually one day, maybe, I don't know. Pretty sure it, I'm pretty sure it'll come to Xbox, man. <laughs> Look at it. That's this PlayStation written all over it. It does have PlayStation written all over it. It's funny that, isn't it? How you can see a game and yeah. it already like protrudes a certain culture of a console. Yep. Which is weird because you I mean when you think about it from a distance, you think only really Nintendo protrudes a certain culture. Yeah, because they have kind of a style of gaming that no one else really does. Mm. But you I see games know, like man. this and you're just like, ah. Come on, it, it, this looks like it's a very like Dark Souls, but in this modern slash vampiric world. If it comes out for Xbox, I will most likely purchase it someday eventually, maybe. Um, if it is if it's <laughs> PS4 only I will dye my hair hot pink. Oh god, you heard it here first, guys. Wow, that's We're putting recorded money down. as well, Ben. That like, is I'm, recorded. I'm oh, that confident. You are so gonna lose. I'm you that lose, confident ben. that this is coming to at least like PC, PS4, and Xbox. Um. Okay. So Ben, mm -hmm. I'm gonna offer you the out now. Yep. <laughs> you don't have to commit to that. You can go back on that promise right now. No judgment. Yeah. No. Nope. It's fine because it's gonna be PS4. Uh, PC exclusive, you know. It. If you don't rescind it by the end of this recording, mm -hmm. then it's like it's sealed. Set in stone. <laughs> You're making me nervous. <laughs> I hope so. You need to be nervous because that's quite a commitment, and I don't mean I to throw <laughs> journalistic integrity at you, Ben. But you have you to. You got to play that card. I love playing that card. I play that card all the time whenever I can because journalism lol. Okay, I tell you I tell you what, I tell you what, we, we won't ha, we won't ha, be dying here. We won't be dying here. Ha, 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 I will ha, ha. write I will write a post onto the website explaining why you guys are better than I am because that you oh, knew that this like was gonna be PlayStation. Better, but I love that idea. 
Can it be one okay. of the like um, featured top five things? <laughs> oh, I, I will pin it and and everything, and I will I will force everybody on the games put it and team to retweet it so that it gets as much reach as possible. I feel like I feel like that's worse than dyeing your hair, but okay. Can I mean this needs to be a proper like essay as well? Like I yeah. want. It's not just like Jared good, Greg good. No, no, no. I mean, I'm 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 fully gonna go into into legitimate reasons. I'm so happy about this. Okay, I feel like you're gonna come up short, Ben. But let's let's do it. Hmm? I really hope it comes to um, just PS4 now. <laughs> no, Maybe don't get me write wrong. To the developer. <laughs> you you've kind of turned. Jared kind of wants it on Xbox so he can actually play it, and Greg's just like, no, fuck it. It's, See, it's now not, I'm on the. F- <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those things, isn't it? Jared can only win now. And that's what I like to do. When I follow an election or something, I like to bet on the people I don't want to win because that way I always feel good. And that's what Jared's got right now. <laughs> He's always going to win. See? Because if, if it doesn't come out, then I get to have this nice article posted for me. But if it does come out, I get to play it. So, yeah, It's win-win. Exactly. Yeah, just, the, um, just a final thing before we, before we finish this podcast. <laughs> Marriage is important. There's Marriage a, is important. <laughs> there's a thing here that says... That basically you can pick a resident of Vane to act as a companion. Because some parts are going to be too difficult for single player. Oh, wow. So it's going to be kind of like Dark Souls. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say as difficult, but probably along the lines. Yeah. Very Did much you guys so. ever play any of the any of the God Eater games? I never played any God Eater games, but they got heavily recommended to me. Yeah, I, think I I played one on the Vita. I don't remember which one it was, but it was I liked it. I've never even heard of them. God Eater. I've eaten I an think orange. Like an anime yeah, it's, uh, it's an anime movie. game, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have a ton of exposure to those. Sorry. To. Oh well. Okay. Come on, come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't even I don't even know what to say to that. To be honest. I mean, I don't have any problem with anime. Like, um, no, it's I saw something. Um, this really funny anime the other month with my girlfriend called Seki Kun is Master of Killing Time. That one's fucking hilarious. I loved it. It's so good. Have you guys not seen it? Never heard no. of it. No, never I, heard of it either. I strongly recommend it. It's it's and really I like watching easy to anime watch. too. It's like a ten minute thing each episode, and I recommend it to the audience, even people that hate anime. You will love this because there are people that genuinely just hate anime. Um, oh yeah, I have which... a friend that doesn't like anime either. He mm. just doesn't like it. He says, he says it doesn't make sense. Like, mm. What? Like, well, I mean, sometimes they sense. don't make sense, but that's something that that's I like, point. I guess. So it's not really a problem for me. Yeah, I don't know. For me, I can't take like sports anime because I mm. love the over the topness and fighting and stuff like that and dramaticness with fighting and like medieval stuff. But what comes to like. They're baking a cake and he's screaming and the cake's exploding everywhere. Oh, uh, what's yeah, that? What's the cooking can't anime that. where everybody gets yeah, naked? Yeah, I can't. I can't. Nope. Yep. They eat food and their clothes falls off. Yep. I can't. I kind of want to watch that. I like the ones which have like they make no sense. Like the premise is ridiculous. I saw one where like that it was just two seasons of just like a man being stuck in a bath. And just, like, he lives in this guy's bath now, and the guy has to, like, bring him food, and, like, his friends turn up in the bath at one point, and I'm just like, this anime's fucking brilliant. There's like, a really cool one called um, The Laughing Salesman, where basically he he's almost like a genie, but not like a genie like we think, like, the 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 typical, well, the atypical genies, where they, they would grant wishes, but at the same time, there would be some kind like, of drawback to them. Mm. Yeah. Um. So he like, there's a woman. She loves she loves shopping. She doesn't love owning things. She loves the the thrill of shopping. The purchase. So, yeah. So he gives yeah. her a credit card, and he's like, "There's no limit. You can spend as much as you want." So she spends ridiculous. I mean, she spends like thousands, buys all these new clothes and everything. And then the next morning, she wakes up and there's like a repo team kicking her door down. And it turns out that the catch of the credit card is that anything she buys gets repossessed the next day. Oh, ah. jeez. And it's all kind of like this guy, he, he gives people what they want and then you're sitting there you're like, oh, where's the catch? Where's the catch? And they're, they're the same sort of thing. They're like 10 minutes each, roughly. Um, but it's like a cool little quirky kind of uh, anime if you ever get bored and you come across it. 
I love I love very like action oriented anime. Or yeah, something. I mean I I kind of like like Attack on Titan. Yeah, like everything's One like Punch Man, a- Attack on Titan, Dragon Ball Z, Alpha yeah. Light, like anything that's ultra violent or anything that has fighting or over yeah. the topness. I'm all for it. I don't do sports animes. Yeah, I can't. I, I can't, can't get into them. I can't get into slice of life anime, um, or anything that's like kind of romance stuff. I can't get into mm. it. It's not my cup of tea. I watch anime for like the over the top fights where they're like shooting around at high speeds and kicking each other, and that's what. That's See, what I, I don't get for. me wrong. I like some like romance in an anime as well too. I guess it just makes them feel like more realistic. I guess. Mm-hmm. Like they actually have emotions and stuff like that as well too. I don't know, but not like those ones that are like strictly dedicated to. Yeah, yeah. It's like kind of like I don't know if you've seen like Sword Art Online. Like that's a good one. That's yeah, yeah. That, that has. But there's like characters it. that like fall in love and stuff like that. Mm. Well, uh, on that note, we hope you enjoyed your gaming news, marriage counseling, anime recommendations. Yeah, we got it all podcast. here for you guys. We, you're in our hands. You can't see it, but my hands are cupped. So the, you can... the, the general den of can I? We can all hop into Jared's cupped hand. You just hop, hop into my. I got you guys here, right here. Mm-hmm. And he'll like, he'll cup, he'll like pat us on the little heads and give us a little noggin yeah. stroke and be like, see, "You're a good I man." I got you. I got. You're fine. You're safe. Oh, <laughs> oh that's nice. That's a nice feeling. Well, uh, you're welcome. Do you guys want to say anything else before we head off? Um, don't do drugs, kids. Um, stay in school and importantly, listen to the podcast. Yeah, that's the most important thing to do. Um, I mean, you don't have to stay to in school. One, yeah. I'm not <laughs> gonna keep you there. Um, I recommend you go to school. And actually, if you are in school, I recommend you do more things that are mischievous. And you're, also, just gonna, you're just gonna contradict me after my my nice speech. I'm not Greg. contradicting you. <laughs> just um, I mean, you know, do things that you can't do when you're grown up. Because when you're younger, you can. I mean, I'm st- I'm not saying that I'm old. I'm like 21. Am I? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> but when when you're like really young, you can get away with shit. Again. Like you can get you can do all sorts of things that you can't do when you're older. And you know, you can just. I I, mean, I used to have a friend. I still have the friend. I don't know why I said I used to. Um, he just like he just used to just grab things like on shelves in supermarkets and just squeeze them and break them and then just put them back and like the people would just watch him do it and just like little scallywag. It. It's it's pretty dodge to be fair. I never did it because I thought it was out. But like you could just do that when you're young. I mean, I don't recommend you do that. Don't break laws, but just do you know naughty stuff and just be a bit of a free spirit. Well, you heard it here first, guys. Gaming mm-hmm. news, marriage counseling, and just life counseling as well. Greg, life Greg's, advice. Greg's views did not reflect the views of the entire team of the Game Solitaire website. I didn't <laughs> think that was too bad. I mean, I once proclaimed myself the Rosa Parks of podcasts or something, didn't I? So, like, that this was a pretty on the. We, we, we glanced over that. We glanced over that. I for, I forgot about that. Mm. There's a lot of stuff I forget about, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I don't have any life advice if you are older than me because I'm not that age. Um, maybe just... I mean, Ben, you're older than me. In fact, Jared, I, how old are you? How old are you two? I'm 24. Wow. How, do you th- how old do you think I am? Well, Jared, you're getting married soon. Which I'm implies not... a certain level of age. Yeah, it do- does it? I don't think so. Uh, well, no, not uh, always. Not always. That's true. At least eighteen. That's what it implies. Yeah. Um, I don't know, because I think, I think you're slightly older than me. I think. Yeah, not by much. I think you're like, I feel like you're twenty three. No, close. I'm twenty two. Are you actually? Oh, that's yeah. cute. Yeah, you, you wasn't far off. Thanks. And Ben, I feel like you're 24, 25? He just told us he was Yeah, I was going to say, it's not like I just said it or nothing. You can't. <laughs> Shh. I think you're 24? What? I hope and, so. Uh, Greg, how did you guess that? You just, <laughs> are just you in my mind? Look, I wanted to look clever in front of everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, as always, I'll have these guys social media stuff in the description i'll link to greg's youtube channel as well go check out their stuff 
Yep, it's a video a week these days because um, mm. I'm busy. And, as well. and an eventual, not yet released at the time of this recording, Shades of Grey on Halo Wars Two. It's gonna <laughs> be out there, and it's gonna be great. Oh no, it might not be great. Don't think that because then it's <laughs> it might be okay. Oh god. Oh, what if it's not? What if it's terrible? Just, just, if it's just terrible, stop. I won't release it, and you'll never see it. But oh, I've broken a promise. <laughs> well, I've already broken the fucking promise because I said I'd do it in the first week it came out, and here we are in April. You're so. just you were this hole is just getting dug yeah. farther and farther mm-hmm. down, Greg. You might as well just you you can oh. put you can put a JCB on expensive as expenses if it helps you. JCB like the truck thing. Yeah, like the, the things that help you dig. I can put a digger. <laughs> oh yeah, because our dig. Oh. There we go. There we go. <laughs> That's brilliant. Oh god, your one a.m. humans much better than my one a.m. thinking. <laughs> I'm normally still at work at this time, to be fair. So. Oh yeah, you're oh, a wow. worker bee in the night now. I oh, am. Yeah. Oh gosh, we need. We're losing Greg. We gotta go, guys. Yeah, we're gonna cut it there. <laughs> we're gonna cut it there. Just go to dead static. Oh. Uh, it goes all right, blip. Well, we will see you guys next week. And at some point we'll have a special guest, but that's only for you guys who are still listening. And yeah. in the meantime, listening... every week we have Jared on, and he is a special guest. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, no, that's so nice. Oh, I like him. He's a good boy. <laughs> okay, yep, that's the cue. We gotta yep, go. Yep, okay, bye, people. Bye. <laughs>